You can see the larger and the smaller. This is McFly Angler. starts now. Hey McFly subscribers. So I am going to be just doing one of these um, uh, videos where I'm going to be talking at you while I tie. Like I said before, these are so much easier for me. Less editing. And I'm just filling out an order. So someone had ordered some game changers here, so I figured I'd tie these on camera. We are going to start um, with the hook. It's got, I've got some uh, 0.15 or 0 0.015 size lead wire. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I make seven. Oh, wait, you know what? <laughs> Thought I was with the smaller hook here. So I got two different game changers one small, one, one large. So the small one I use the 0 0.015. So this is for the small. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven wraps, roughly, give or take. Put them together and push it down. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to move on to the larger one here. And switching out my lead wire, or lead free wire, actually. All right, so we are going to do this point two. Uh, 0 0.02, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I do nine with this, with the larger. Because again, we've got a lot more material on this. I've got to get a little more weight to be able to push it down. And here I will talk about why I'm putting lead. Um, because these have the tendency to want to flip around when stripped really quick. And so I find lead um, adding a little bit, kind of keeling it down below the, the line of the hook. So this is where you're attaching on. And this is the line that you want to, anything that you put below it is going to, if it's buoyant, it's going to flip that up. If it's um, heavy, it's going to keep that down, right? Um, so that's kind of the idea of like jig hooks. Whenever you got a jig hook, it's because the, the jig part, the hook is bent down. So it allows you to put some lead wraps on the on the wire or a bead or whatever and kind of get the the weight below where the tie-in point would be so allows you to flip a hook upside down or whatever while it's being stripped so anyway i add some um this is vivis 140 and i just put this on um wrap up and down it to hold it in place and then i'm going to cover it by making uh thread wraps over it but i like spinning my bobbin counterclockwise to be able to uh, cover that a little better. It kind of splays that thread out a little more, keeps it from being corded, and then just do your best to cover those thread wraps. It might take quite a few passes, or cover the thread wraps, what am I saying? Cover the, the lead wraps. I just do a couple turn whip finish there, cut that off, and then I add a little bit of super glue. Oh, <laughs> this is the one that has the. Everyone always gives me a hard time because my super glue is all matted. Um, the the little brush, I have two of them. This one is the less matted one. <clears throat> I always keep them there because I still use this, but on camera, everyone kind of gives me a hard time about my super glue not being well maintained, but you know, I don't like to waste. So anyway, so I, I do that. I set that aside. I've got a little piece of foam here that I just hook it onto. And let's go ahead and uh, wrap this up as well. 
And as you can see, I'm pushing it down with thread wraps and I'm getting it so it's all below the, that line. And that's, like I said, gonna keel it. And that's gonna keep it from kind of wanting to flip around while being stripped hard. Uh, normal, regular strips, it's not gonna do that. But when you strip it hard, it will. So spin counterclockwise. I think that's counterclockwise. Anyway, spin it the opposite direction of how you tie. And then that uncords it. And you don't need a big whip finish there because you're gonna wrap back up over it, so it does not matter. <laughs> I'll appease the people that don't like my super glue. All right, so there. And then you could, so it doesn't get all nasty, you could take, like I got a shop tower, towel here, you could just kind of blot it. Kind of helps dry it a little quicker, but I do this first, so that way it is, uh, it's ready for when I'm ready. All right, so now we're gonna do the tail. And I am going to do the tail with Chickaboo, white Chickaboo, because I'm tying a shad color uh, for both of them. And for the larger one, I do two of these uh, Chickaboo feathers. And for the smaller one, I do one. And that should be enough bulk for the tail. Now you could use anything for the tail that you want, but I, I like using Chickaboo, personally. All right, so for the tail, I got these little tail pieces, articulated fish spine tail pieces. These are from Fish Skull, and they're just like a little wire loop kinda, but it has a little tag down piece that you can put in your vise. Make that a little tighter. All right, and we are actually gonna switch out the thread as well to a little finer thread. I find this bulks it up too much. And since we're putting so much material on this, there's no way that this is going to get a, you know, fish tooth in it to, um, you know, break off. But it, I mean, it's Vivas. So it's Vivas 6 Ot that I'm using now again in white and uh, it's really strong stuff guys all right so there we go so I added the thread on there I am you know I find if you wet it sorry yeah in my mouth it's gross I'm sure some people are grossed out by that but all the all the people will do that I mean it's really really like all the pros like you buy them from the shops I guarantee you that all the flies have been in people's mouths um, it's just easier to wet it that way but anyway so I'm I'm measuring out a little tail. Now this is the, oh, I'm getting the, the larger one here, so I need two. Oh, yeah. Switching back and forth between the smaller and larger. Gotta remember. Plus being on camera, forgetting what I'm doing here, guys. All right, so I got two. I'm measuring, I'm uh, aligning the tips. I'm gonna wet all that. And I am measuring out a tail. Now this is going to be a pretty long tail because it's a larger one. Now, so you could tie it on like this and come in with your scissors. Cut that off close. Clean everything up. And then whip finish. Nope. I don't like that one that breaks on the whip finish, so I always like to make sure the whip finish is really solid. I give it a good tug, and if it breaks, that means my whip finish wasn't as good. So there we go, that's a good whip finish. And then to really secure that, so that's the tail section. This is the only part of thread that <clears throat> is exposed to fish teeth. So I add a little bit of, um, and I will down the, the line, all the whip finishes I will 
add this, but this is um, Solares um, Ultra Thin. I really like it for this. It's just so much, it, it, it hardens this up, it makes it almost indestructible, and then <clears throat> it uh, it's just a really good Good thing it's really quick as you could see that's that was really quick to cure it that is dry or hardened um, that's good to go and that will that will be really really solid I mean you could use super glue whatever you want but personally I like that stuff for this application there's that and then this one for the small one I'm making a tail with the micro tail section so it's basically the same thing just really really small So, exactly the same thing. We are gonna measure out a tail, but it is gonna be smaller. So as you can see, it's a little bit shorter of a tail because this is a much smaller fly. Actually, I'm gonna show you the other way. So you could actually measure out that tail, get where you're gonna tie it in, figure that out, and then cut that right cut that square and then you could tie that in as well so that's another option if you want I actually find this much easier on the smaller ones to do it this way because you don't have a lot of room to tie in and then therefore if you're cutting you're gonna get some of that fiber over the, the eye here which makes it a little difficult so all right My thing is starting to split here. That can happen sometimes um, with resin or anything. Uh, the brush, you know, put it in and out of the, the tube, it's going to end up catching and you're going to splay it out. Um, I have one that's really bad. And that happens over time. And you can see that really kind of gunked up actually so you could stick that because it kind of got gunked up it's been sitting out it's the winter so it's cold so it starts to harden you can stick it in the microwave for five seconds at a time until it kind of loosens up but i had just gotten these from Solares. they i called and asked them to send them they sell them i think they're like two bucks each or something on the website but they're extra brushes that you replace so anyway, there's that tail. So you just pull this, this brush out and you stick this one back in. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Not with this one, I'm gonna do it with the really gunky one. And I'll show you guys, this will come out like brand new. Um, it's pretty cool. I haven't done this before, but it's like something new. So there you go, I pulled that out. Now I got the cap. <clears throat> Drop that in my trash let's see how hard this is well you twist it in let's see there we go so you use needle nose pliers and you can kind of straddle this and there's a little ledge and then you can push that in kind of twist and that will get in there and there we go now that's in there nice and tight so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick this now this whole thing as you can see well it came out nice and even but there's a little bit of like hardening on it so i'm going to stick that in the microwave for five to ten seconds and it should uh Clear that up and then we'll move on all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the the next size um, links okay and for the larger one i'm using the 10 millimeter okay up here it says 10 millimeter all right so two of those it's what i do now you could do any kind of 
arrangement of these if you want. And then these, for the mini one, I'm using six millimeter. And they're real small. And again, two of those. That's how I like tying mine up. And then for the material, we got Game Changer Chenille. Now, I used to tie the whole thing with this, but there is a couple other chenilles that you could use that are very similar that I find I like a little better. So, for these smaller section pieces, I like the, fin the finesse body chenille, okay? And the medium, I guess it's, it is, but that's what I use. And then there's glass minnow chenille, which is a little bit thicker that I use on the medium size shanks. And then for the, the head, I use the game changer chenille, but well, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So, you wanna cut off a piece. This is for the, this is a um, glass minnow chenille. And then you wanna pull off a little section so you've got a tie-in point. So let's start with the really small one. And these have like a little, little spot to put it in your vise. And you're not gonna see that on camera, I don't think, but it's a little triangular, triangular uh, piece that you can kind of get the edge in. And then you take your tail and you can link that in there. So now that's linked in. And then you just close up that loop with some thread wraps. Now you gotta watch out because that is wire and that will cut your thread. Um, once you get up to the front and I'll show you what to do when you get there. So now tie in that tip there. And when you get up to the front, you want to go in front of it a couple wraps and you want to go loose. You don't want to go too tight because you will cut the thread if you go too tight. And once you cover that with a couple wraps, then that's good. That's not going to cut your thread. All right. So you want to pull everything back. Stroke all the fibers rearward with every single wrap. And you're gonna do four, I believe, four wraps. One, two, three, so that's the third. No, it's, I think I can get one more in there. Yeah, so it's five, sorry, five with this. So there's the fifth. And then you capture it. You can just wiggle your thread through it, and that'll keep from trapping all the fibers, or help at least, you're gonna trap some. All right, so once you wrap in front of it a couple, uh, you know, over it and then in front of it a little bit, then you can use your fingernail to get it up out of the eye if you have it at all in the eye. You're gonna have a couple fibers wanna go forward, so you just wanna work them back a little bit, tie back up over it, Get some really fine point scissors. I got these from Risen. They're little mitten scissors. I like them a lot. And just come in, try to cut it as close as you can. Cut off that, um, there we go, that material. And then wrap over that cut a couple times. One, two, three, four. We don't need a ton of ton of wraps because we are going to cement this with that solar res resin and that will harden it and that will never come loose all right so uh, this is the one that you saw was all chunky and i replaced the tip of it and there we go now i've got a nice new really fine point brush there so I can really get some detailed brushes. So there we go. That's done. And this looks really funky because it's not trimmed. This doesn't look like anything, but we will trim it at one point. Okay. So there's that. Let's do one more of the small. And this is how I do it. I just kind of work it um, with the materials I'm using. So I do the smaller ones, get all the, you know, got the two tails done. And then I um, usually I do these in, in five packs. So I'll do five at a time. I'll get five tails done. Uh, of course, the five hooks and then the five tails. And then I'll work on um, you know, each size section of piece. So we're using the same, uh, that same chenille. Capture that. Work it back as far as you can. 
and go up to the front, do that loose couple wraps in front, boom. Try to keep all the fibers pointing rearward. It can be hard to do sometimes. This stuff wants to spin on you and do some funky stuff, but that's okay. We will end up brushing all this out, so it won't matter. I mean, it does matter to a degree, but. All right, so I got those, I think that was five wraps. I wasn't counting. I was just going off of what it looked like. But my guess is five wraps. So I made a couple wraps in front as well after capturing it. Use my fingernail to push everything rearward. Try to wrap back up on top of that a little bit. I'm sorry my hands are in the way here. Pull all the fibers rearward. Wrap over that whip finish, or over the, the trim, and then you can whip finish. And then sometimes you get it right in the eye there. You don't need a lot of room with these, but you need some room on the eye, so you can work it back with your fingers. There we go. Let's go ahead and cement the head. And that's how quick that cures, especially with this. This is their Solaris's new light. And yeah, this thing is super powerful. It instantly cures. So now we're gonna go with the bigger pieces. So this is gonna be the back section of the larger fly. And uh, basically the same thing. Now you can use this finer fiber. And like I said, this stuff using, uh, not fiber, sorry, finer thread with this. You're just gonna wrap a few more times, but this keeps from you bulking up that section too much. Again, this will cut your thread, so you wanna wrap in front of that, cover that wire, so you know you're not gonna cut, and then start wrapping. Now you're gonna get more wraps out of this. This is a longer piece. So I'm not counting guys, you can do the count if you want. Um, but as, as you can see, there's a lot more wraps here than there was with, um, with the shorter piece. All right, so there we go. Let's pull it all back. Wrap back up on top. You know, and I find these are really not too bad to tie. What takes forever is trimming them. But I like to trim them after. Some people will trim this beforehand. Um, they'll go ahead and trim each piece. So before tying on the next piece, they'll start trimming this. Um, I find that really difficult to do because you don't know what, you know, that sh it's hard to get that shape down perfectly. And then you, f you find that you're still re-trimming after everything, so. Now, obviously, this is going to be a very long video, guys. These do not, these are not quick. These are very, very long flies to tie. In fact, it takes me a couple days. So you will see once I take a break from this, um, which I got to pick up my kids from school pretty soon here. So um, I might be taking a break before I actually should, just because I got to pick them up. But you'll see probably. Um, <laughs> Once the next day rolls around, I'll have a different shirt on. So, uh, yeah. This is really a multi-day fly. No matter if I tie five or I tie two, you know, it's still gonna take a couple days. It's just what it is. And that's why I give a little discount when I'm tying multiple of really any fly because I can, as you can see, I'm switching back and forth a lot between materials and stuff. If I'm tying, let's say five of this size, then I can, you know, I can do these and I'm doing them in steps still with the, with the different sizes, but I'm getting out more materials and, you know, it takes a little longer, just a little more in depth. So I give a discount when I sell flies 
when it's a whole bunch of the same. Um, five packs basically of the same fly because it does save me time. It really does. And anyone that ties a lot knows what I'm talking about. It's you can get in a rhythm of tying the same fly over and over again. It gets boring, but it's also going to be a lot quicker um, per fly. So you save that. So there we go. There's the. I got two tail sections. You can see already. We've got a. Um, let's see if I can show you on on camera. We've got a difference in size already. Um, but next we are gonna. What time is it actually? I gotta pick them up yet. No, nope. not yet. All right, so next we are gonna use, for the larger one, the 15 millimeter fish skull articulated spines, two of those. And then we are gonna use, for the smaller one, the micro articulated spines, we're gonna use the eight millimeter for the next set of sections and also two of those and that's this oh and by the way you got that little thing down um, on the that first tail section you could clip that off if you want I leave it down and that way it kind of adds a little extra weight to keep even the back from spinning around it's just kind of adds a little bit more to keeping it down and I don't really see that that affects you know the fish seeing that or anything it doesn't it doesn't affect strike rates or anything so so we're just closing that off the same as all the others okay and then I like going up a little bit and creating a bit of a thread dam over that little section first and that's going to keep everything um, going to keep a dam in front of the the thread so you can wrap back up further on these sections otherwise it all wants to push forward because it is angled down and it's just wire i know some people will add a dab of super glue there and that'll kind of help keep it there and they can wrap up further but i find this works just fine so now the glass minnow chenille piece so about that long is enough for all four you can use a little more or a little less depending on how many flies you're tying at once so same thing, we are gonna pull off a little section to tie in. This time you can go a little longer since we've got a longer piece to tie in and that'll just keep everything in better. These tight wraps really hold that down. Make sure that's not gonna pull out because especially on this larger one, I am, I'm, I'm wrapping pretty tight. With this, especially the first wrap, you really want to work those fibers rearward. And this has the tendency to want to wrap on you, uh, to spin, I mean, on you. So you want to kind of make sure this is all even. It's not all spun up. Because with every wrap, it wants to spin. So I make a tight pull with that every two wraps or so. Just to kind of keep everything you can pull like that holding on the front once you get further up okay this looks messy this is I mean it is messy um, but it'll come together once you finish and you'll see um, but you want to try to get all those fibers pointed back some are going to get trapped it's just what it is but as many as you can get uh, because the denser you wrap this the better that body looks uh, so you really want to get this wrapped in dense you know tur one turn right almost on top of the other as close as you can get to the previous turn as you can see I'm making quite a few wraps with this I'm not counting it guys because I never do usually listening to something on my earphones when um, when I'm tying these so I don't I don't count I'm just kind of enjoying the day listen to something usually a podcast I um, listen to a lot of Chuck Missler which is a pastor um, as you guys have seen I post a lot of Bible verses so 
wouldn't call myself religious, but I have a faith, and I, I really find a lot of that stuff very, very interesting. So I'm usually listening to that while I'm tying. Oh, there it goes, breaking. So but yeah, that's usually what I'm doing while I'm dying here. Unless the kids are home, and if the kids are home, then I gotta pay attention to them. I can't have your phones in, but. There we go. So once we get to this point, I like, especially this side, I like start taking a, a I take a bodkin here and I'll just kind of pick out each of the, the ones and that'll kind of really fill this out, make it look a little bit better. Um, it makes the trimming side much easier. Cause once it's all, if it's not picked out, you could trim and then pieces will get, you know, once you color it up and everything, you'll untrap some pieces and then you'll have it all nicely trimmed and it'll be a couple scraggly pieces sticking out and you'll be like what was that from so i find that picking it out kind of helps minimize that a little bit all right so next piece so i'm going to probably not do a lot of talking here unless there's something important to tell you um so i'll probably fast forward most of the footage Oh, there we go, breaking the thread. And that's so rare with this Vivas, I did pull way too hard. That's okay, we can fix this. I had that tight and I know that it didn't unravel, so. that off let's cut that off and then here's that piece and that's wrapped back up on it and that had not moved I was watching it and it did not unravel at all so that's good and that's that's in there tight so we saved it that happens guys it, everyone to everyone it happens we all break thread try not to as much as possible it's not the best thing to do but it happens Sometimes it's disastrous, sometimes it's not. Luckily that time was not. All right. So I have a feeling with this really white, it's kind of blown out. So I'm gonna lower the, I'm gonna change out the, um, camera here, hold on. All right, that's a little better, I think. Hopefully that's less blown out. All right, so we got the, basically the tail section of the larger piece done. You can see how well that moves. And it'll move even more once we trim this because the, the fiber itself is holding back um, this. I see a lot of people that tie these and then, you know, there's no movement in them. Um, and that's because they're, it's too dense. They're tying too dense and the material is touching the other part of the material and it's not wiggling. So you really don't want to go too dense with this. You want it dense enough so you get a nice body. Um, the denser you tie it, the more smooth that body is going to look. But then once you go in and tie it, or, uh, trim it, you want to make sure that you trim this down so that way there's not too much. So that's why, see, I've got the, the finer fiber towards the back and the thicker fiber towards the front. And we're going to use even thicker on the head section. Um, but that's, uh, that's how I get that really good movement with it. Uh, otherwise it wouldn't it wouldn't move um, you really have to trim that down if you're using all of the the whole thing that um, the game changer chenille because it's really thick stuff and uh, which is great to build up a really big body and all that and it looks great but I find this actually makes more effective flies if tied correctly so now we're moving on to the smaller tail section. We've got the eight millimeter, I think eight millimeter pieces. Yep. And we're going to use the same fiber. All 
Now obviously a thinner wire you can't tug as hard when wrapping this on but you you can by touching up by the, the part there and pulling down it keeps that from you're, you're not going to bend the wire um, but you can get a nice really tight um, body and on these smaller ones since I can't tug as tight I try to do that almost every wrap I'll, I'll tug it and get that really tight so it kind of gets right up against the, the other piece all right so there we go let's go ahead and capture this you want to make sure you're not trapping too many fibers so as little as possible Sometimes you get a little trouble and it wants to catch. As you can see, there's a couple tricks. There we go. Now it's funny, most flies. I'm tying on camera. <laughs> I do. I, I try not to have longer fingernails. I try to keep all. But with these, it really helps to have longer fingernails. So because um, you can use them to a little bit longer. I mean, obviously, trim them. But you don't want to trim too. It gives you an extra tool to really kind of pinch that back up. All right, that's done. So now the tails are done. So I've got a little extra section here. This is too small for really anything, but that section I'll put it back in and use it for the next one. Got to bring back our hooks. They're all dry by now. Yep. So, and that's why I do it that way. Otherwise, I would be right now tying those hooks up, and then I would have to sit and wait them. I wait for them. So we're using quite a bit here. We're going to grab a piece, maybe half as long longer as the last. It's a pretty long piece. Might be more than we need, but better to have more than, too, more, too much than too little. So we are gonna go ahead and attach the backs. Now, actually, I don't need this yet because I gotta attach, attach the backs on, but. All right, so there's a lot of guys that use different wire. Um, this stuff's a little expensive, but this is what I use because it's coated and just what I use so um, uh, there's the this one is for size six hooks or larger and this is for size uh, six hooks or smaller now I'm using a size four by the way my hook I never showed you guys the hook this is a Gamagatsu SL short I believe SL 11 short I believe is the is the name of the hook and uh, this is a size four uh, and that's this is uh, a size um, uh, one aught, okay, and that's what I use for for each of them. But I use the smaller size for the, the mini uh, the mini one because it's strong enough. I've never lost a tail. Now, if you were going to put a hook, like a trailer hook, on the back, then you might want to go something a little heavier, like this. Um, but I, I think I read that this is something like 15 pound, and honestly. Since there's no hook, you're not you're not going to lose it. You're just not. Um, but we're tying on the bigger one here, so let's go ahead and cut off a section. Never, ever, ever use your scissors to cut wire. You will ruin your scissors. Use pliers. Okay. Always have pliers handy. In fact, I grab grab some heavy duty pliers. I like these. Those work perfect for this because you can get up really, really close. All right. So that's what I'm going to use. And we are also switching back thread. So I am going to put on the one aught thread to give a little more strength to holding in the wire. So we're starting the thread. We're going to take the wire. See there's a curve, curve of the wire here. Um, you want that curve to angle upward. I, actually, it might not matter, but that's what I do. So I have the tip going, extending out about halfway up the hook shank. I make couple wraps about halfway back up on top of my th uh, thread base 
and then I come down a wrap and then I pull this tag end back and I wrap back up on top of that and that will never pull through. Now that that is wire, so you can cut your thread. So once you go over the tip of the wire, lighten your thread wraps, don't tie, tie too hard, but I'm telling you, that's never, I can never pull that out. That's in there solid. Um, so we are gonna wrap back, and you want this to where the center of the line of the, um, the center of the, the shank, the hook shank, it, this is basically lined up right at the center so right there because it, it's going to curve down a little bit and once you pull that out straight that's lined up in fact that's a little too far there we go that's where i want to be and you're going to come out two or three wraps like that you're going to grab the tail section this is angled up i'm going to make sure it's angled down and then you're just going to go right through the tail section like that and you're creating a little loop and you're gonna make four wraps to hold it now you got a loop but that's a pretty big loop so you want to close that up a little bit and there we go I'm happy with that and then you want to make sure that this loop stays up and down not it doesn't turn sideways or otherwise the your your tail will turn sideways as well so make sure that stays up and down then you wrap up like this over top of where the front part had gotten turned down and I wrap up a couple wraps and I come back down to right in front of that bump that was made I pull this back and I make a couple wraps like that there and then I can cut this off and so that doesn't make a big bump right there and it makes it so much easier to tie in um, the chenille all right so there we go and that actually makes it pretty smooth right up along there there's a little bit of a bump i mean it's what you're tying in wire but that kind of mitigates that a little bit and then i whip finish and add right on top right to the back but not all the way into the that loop just right up to the back and what that does with the super that's super glue um, what that does is that hardens the thread so and you can always pat that down a little bit if you have too much um, that hardens that thread and just basically keeps that from you know no matter how many times this wiggles and pushes that thread uh, the the wire uh, bends through there that um, that thread isn't going to wear and kind of break and fray off um, that's I mean it could over time but but that super glue really, really holds that. And that's why I use a heavier thread there. And I also use the super glue because the wire is really strong, but the thread can, can wear. So this is now really sticky, but you can see where we're going with this, right? And by the way, that loop, you don't want it super tight, but you also don't want it really loose because if it's really loose, it's, it's gonna come back around and very easily foul on your hook. Now it looks like it will right now, and it can, Okay, but this does have a little tension once it gets right there. There's a little bit of tension, and if I can force it, I can make it, but generally while you're fishing it, that's not gonna happen as long as you have the right loop size. And you'll learn over time how, how big to make your loop. All right, so let's go with the smaller one. Let's do the same thing. We're gonna use the same wire, or same uh, thread. All right, so we've got now the smaller sized wire, and again, you want it to angle about, or I'm sorry, uh, reach about halfway up the hook shank. Make a couple tight wraps up and then one back down. Fold that back over and wrap back up on top of it. Put that super glue up until the that loop there but don't get it in the loop or it will gum up that loop and keep this from moving but you can see that moves now 
All right, so we're setting both of those aside. Okay, you can see, and we are gonna wait until that dries. But I've gotta go pick up my son, so next time you see me, I'll have a different shirt, most likely. If you're wondering what I'm doing, you can start a bobbin pretty quickly by sucking the thread through. Um, make switching out thread a lot quicker. Anyway, I'm just going to start the thread. Bring it back to where the bend is. And you can see how stiff that is now. Even if this wiggles a lot, you're not going to break off the thread. It's going to keep, because we added the super glue, it's going to keep the little loop here uh, up and down versus going sideways. So definitely add that. You really do want to add a little super glue there. You know, a lot of people ask why I don't do, um, at least with the other videos, why I didn't use UV resin there. And um, the reason why is uh, UV resin is great. I love UV resin. I use it for as much as I can. But anywhere there's movement, UV resin hardens so much. I mean, you could use a flexible resin, but I don't, I don't know if you'd get the same strength with that. Um, if it's moving, it's going to crack, and that's just the deal. So it's great for like cementing heads or anything that's not going to move. But um, you know, I find super glue to be a little better with uh, with that. Um, seems like okay. Well, you could use resin, and then you don't have to wait for the glue to dry, but. I don't think it's as good, honestly, in that in that sense. Uh, UV resin has a lot of really good applications, but that's just one that I don't think is the best. So anyway, uh, I tied that in same way as before, and then we're just going to wrap. Um, this is going to be quite a few wraps because the entire shank, and I like really getting these in tight because the head, I want dense. I want a really dense head so it pushes some water. Um, so almost every single wrap, I'm, you know, I'm doing a quick little tug. Nice thing is it's a, it's a heavy wire shank, so we're never going to bend that. Now, I do also use risen hooks with these with my own um, when I'm fishing. Uh, they're a great price for what they are, but I just, uh, when I'm selling these, using Gamagatsu because people know Gamagatsu a little better. Um, slightly sharper hooks. Not much difference, honestly, but slightly sharper. Um, you know, the risen are still really strong, so. Um, so I use them. I use them a lot with my own, but. Alright, so we capture it with, uh, once we reach the head, we capture it with a couple tight wraps. Then wrap back up on it like every other section. Really no different here. I keep saying that this is really strong and it doesn't break. It, it does. I see I'm pulling really hard. Um, <laughs> broke my thread twice. You know, I rarely do break my thread, so it's just because uh, I'm on camera, of course. On that one, I couldn't even blame the, the wire because there's no wire there. Uh, we all, you know, no one ties perfectly. We all make our mistakes. We're not machines, you know. So, of course, pick this out. There we go. That doesn't look like much right now. I mean, it kind of has the rough shape. In fact, 
a lot of people online that I see when they tie these, I mean, this is, you know, they trim them. And uh, this is about usually what they get to in trimming. So um, we're going to do a little better than this, though. Let's move on to the small one. All right. So same thing. We're just going to start the thread, bring it back to the, the loop there made by the wire. I'm going to pull off a section of this... Uh, Stuff. And if you don't remember, uh, well, this was from yesterday that I was thinking, but <laughs> for you guys, it's probably just a few minutes, so I'm sure you remember, but I'm using that Game Changer chenille, so. The nice thing about this Game Changer chenille is you can mark it up pretty easily, so it takes color really well. Sharpies, um, uh, that those ad markers the shark pack or whatever they're called or there's another brand that a lot of people use for fly tying it's quite expensive um, so I don't use them but I forgot the name of that brand but there's quite a few different markers out there on the market um, and this will take the color of any of them um, permanent markers I mean obviously you don't want to use non-permanent or as soon as it hits the water it'll bleed out so the same thing we're just wrapping on there you can see this starts to twist all right so I just periodically will untwist and just uh, try to keep this as straight as possible to get the most even wraps and of course I've got to talk about my sponsor Risen Risen um, and I you know I like talking about them, but I know some people don't like uh, me talking about sponsors, but they do sponsor me. They help uh, provide for the channel. Um, they help bring these videos to you guys um, because without them, I, you know, wouldn't make enough money to be able to be doing these. So um, I do appreciate them and they, you know, honestly, they really are great. I, I'm really particular with who I bring onto the channel for sponsorship. Um, I've been working now with them for a while, so anyone that is familiar with the channel already knows about them. If you're not, if you've not seen the channel before, um, know that they are amazing. So if you're just getting into fly fishing or you've been in it for a while and you're looking for another rod, um, they sell rods, reels, um, uh, fly line, um, everything that they sell is really good quality. Really like their gear. Um, and it's great prices. For instance, they have a rod that's only a hundred bucks. Um, and it's, absolutely amazing i mean it's not like a cheap walmart brand hundred dollar rod it's it's a really good rod in fact i use it all the time um it's one of my favorite rods uh and you know great reels um i love their lw reel um, especially for freshwater it's amazing um even saltwater it'll work pretty well um but they do have a saltwater ro uh, rod and reel um Goliath is the rod and the, uh, um, I forgot the name of the, the reel. My goodness. Um, it's too early. I haven't had my coffee. I better drink some coffee here. But, um, great, great stuff. All really reasonably priced. Um, in fact, better than anywhere I've seen. Um, well, there we go. That's all done. And, uh, yeah, they, uh, they also sell hooks and other fly tying gear and stuff like that so check them out www.risenfly.com and you guys get a discount type in mcfly at checkout for 15 percent off of anything you buy there so anyway now that we are done here with the two you can see the difference in size obviously uh, about half the size this is about two and a half inches and in reality this ends up about three and a half maybe four so um yeah, that's that's about the difference. I call this the medium, and this one I call the the mini. I've never really tied any. I, I have tied a couple larger ones. Um, they, you know, they're pretty big. Um, uh, I see some people that tie them, you know, massive. I don't really see a need for that personally. I mean, where I fish, at least, um, I don't I don't have any places that bass really want, or any kind of fish really want really large flies. Um, but you know. Maybe you do. Maybe you fish where fish want 
really big fly. So you could always tie these a little larger. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can kind of move things around here and get you guys positioned where you can watch me now trim these flies. And that's the biggest part. That takes the longest part is trimming. Man, I can I can all day long um, tie these and you know get get them done pretty quickly. In fact, just tying I can probably get you know quite a few done. But once I go into trimming, that's the long part. That takes probably as long or longer than the tying portion. So if you do it right. Um, so anyway, let's see if we can get this uh, positioned correctly. I might have to move this uh, desk here. Um, all right, all right, guys. So let's go ahead and trim this. I usually use. This is a Fiskars scissor, okay? And uh, this is the risen, uh, what, the, what do they call these? The um, razor scissor, I think. And the nice thing about these is you can tighten them to get a, uh, a cleaner cut. Okay, or loosen them if you need, but those are for more finer cuts, and this is gonna be for the, the big first initial cuts. So what I do is I go from the back to the front. So I start here, and I cut this pretty, pretty shallow um, into it, or I guess deep, or whatever you would call it. <laughs> I cut, cut pretty far into it, basically, um, and then I try to kind of cut up it like that, make a rough teardrop shape kind of in a way. Then I turn it around. I'm trying to cut on, you know, the top and the bottom basically. And that's the thing is this is just a rough cut. We are not doing a whole lot. Um, we're just kind of getting material off. And that's why these scissors, they're, they're larger. And allow me to do more cut with it. Now I go from the back to the front because it cuts a little better but it's not as precise, okay? Um, so when we're doing more detailed cuts, we're gonna go from the front to the back. But I cut the sides a little deeper, a little, um, little heavier of a cut, um, to kind of narrow it a little bit more. Make sure I'm cutting only on the side here. Again, we're not we're just getting a rough shape going before we do more detailed cuts here. And we can look around to see if there's anything that is requiring a few more touch ups. I'm gonna go ahead and wet this tail to keep it out of the way. So I'm not gonna accidentally cut it. I've done that before. All right, so I've got this stickiness on my desk. Put uh, one of my stickers on there, which was really cool to have. And then it got all marked up with pen and stuff and it Started looking bad, so I tried to take it off. I need goo gone. Still haven't done it. Keep on talking about needing it, but I haven't done the goo gone. It's not important enough for me, but for these videos, I keep forgetting to do it before the video. So sorry, guys. But anyway, all right, so I, I now have a rough shape. Obviously, we've got a lot to do. So I pull, I pinch the sides like this. I pull this up and I do a I, I cut like this, kind of round the front a little bit. 
and this isn't going to be the final but then I come down from the front to the back and I find that this gives me a little a little better control To do a little more precision if that makes sense so so that was the top now I'm gonna just do the bottom so from here I go from the the eye and I kind of angle my scissors to hit the hook point if that makes sense obviously don't cut into the hook point or you're you'll ruin your scissors all right so there and then we've got the hook bend that gets in the way so I pull everything up I've got a little angle there. Let's get that out of the way. Then I try to cut right under the hook point. Make, get that out of the way. And then I pull everything back like that on the side because the, the hook bends in the way. I make a cut down like that. Try to do the same thing on the other side. And I don't know if I'm in the video still. Sorry guys if I'm not. Anyway, the way I have this camera positioned, it's uh, <laughs> a little bit in my way, but it's looking a little better. Okay, and then for the sides, I just lay it like this. And I start really trying to get a lot of material off the sides because I want this to be uh, pretty narrow. This is going to be a shad. So shad are kind of tall and narrow. They're, they're a different shape, you know. Um, got this see how it wants to push out of the way when you're cutting so sometimes I have to angle it get some good cuts like that all right let's flip this over let's do the same thing on the other side and again this is not the final cut we are gonna be doing some more heavier cuts later we're not heavier really I mean we're just gonna keep on trimming this down really but we will do more than this. We're just getting a rough bait fish shape. And sometimes, because it wants to push out of the way, so let's brush all this out. Sometimes I notice that if I'm not getting a lot of material, I can kind of do, instead of back and this way, I can kind of do sideways cuts like this. If you have, just make those really light. Don't do too much of that, but that will get you a little, little more, a little easier of a cut if some of the finer fibers are getting out of your way here. And really the trick to these flies is not cutting a ton of material off right away. It's going slowly, a little bit at a time, trying to build the shape roughly, getting that shape down, and then, you know, I color it and then I trim again. I actually do three separate trims with this all right so that's that with that let's go ahead and do a little more finer cuts here i like looking at it at the front and seeing where the shape is i can see here that this 
is sticking out a little extra. And you can see this, these scissors, they're sharp. But they do finer cuts. So sometimes it moves out of the way a little more, but I like that because now I'm just going through and I'm just kind of building the shape. It's not going to do anything too much. All right, so that was bul bulged out there on the side. I can see that there's some bulging going here that I don't like. I'm just trying to get the front to be shaped roughly how I want. All right, and it's bulged out on the side here as well. I try to get both sides pretty even. Don't go too much. You really want to just do a rough shape here. You don't want to over trim right now. And we will, over time, trim this down, get this looking, you know, closer and closer to a bait fish as time goes. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of material right here. Um, and so I'll just kind of. We're going to redo this again in a minute, but I'll just kind of get some of the extra long fibers out of the way. See, this is kind of bulky right there. And that's going to inhibit it from moving. So you can see there's already a lot more movement once we get some of these out of pushing against the, the next segment. Now, unfortunately, I've got to kind of tie this with my arms extended out. I'm not able to get really close because of where the camera is. So it's going a little slower than usual for me, but. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Obviously, we've got a lot more to do, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and wet this. I'm going to run it under some water and I'm going to brush it out and that will release any of the trap fibers and also see all this dust. Um, that's going to, I mean, it's every time I shake this, there's little fibers going everywhere. I find wetting it really helps get those fibers out. And what that's going to do is once we color this, which we're going to do next, that will allow um, the color to get in there and not be coloring just this stuff um, it'll really get the color in there pretty well so there's that let's go ahead and work with this one it's going to be the same thing um, we're going to start with the bigger scissors like i said just trim slowly you can take more off later can't put more on. So if you make a deep cut and mess it up, you'll have to start anew, which is not fun. Like starting to get a shape going. Now, because this is a smaller fly, um, we're obviously gonna have to cut a lot more material off. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the, the top like we did before. But as you can see, I'm cutting quite a bit more off than before. So make sure I'm still on the top here. And we can cut a little deeper into the tail. There we go. Now, if you are going to be doing this um, and you're going to be using these Fisker scissors, they bite pretty easily into the material. So I would, like I said, only use this for the initial bend. Do not continue using these scissors for the smaller cuts. This is just to remove a lot of material, but you will accidentally cut too much if you use these throughout. You'll want a more specific fly tying scissor. These are, I think these Fiskers are made for like uh, cloth, they're cloth scissors. Um, 
My wife had some of these uh, that she was using for sewing and stuff, um, cut cloth, and I was like, oh, those cut really well. So I tried using them, and it was great for the first couple cuts, then I realized, oh, boy, that cut way too much material off when I wasn't expecting it. So, like I said, here we go, we got a nice little teardrop shape. Yeah, so I realized I could use that for the initial cuts, but then I really got to go in with some specific, I mean, granted, very sharp scissors. These are very sharp, but... Um, they're not cloth scissors, so they don't bite as much. I don't, I don't know if there's like a serration on these or what, but they bite a little too much for the final cuts. So with these flies, um, if you haven't ever fished a game changer before, they are amazing. Now they take forever to tie, obviously. Um, I, I found it's about an hour each fly for me, roughly, give or take a little bit, but roughly about an hour once everything's said and done. Now, if you wanted to tie these in all white, they could be a little quicker because you're not coloring them, but um, I find that they just take so long. But, you know, as long as you're not losing them to trees and stuff, um, fishing with a little heavier line, they, they are really uh, um, durable. They, they're not gonna fall apart on you if, if you tie them right. There's a lot of material around the thread wraps, so it's going to protect the thread wraps. Uh, fish teeth are not going to get in to where the thread is. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to destroy these very quickly. I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure they can be destroyed. I've never had one destroyed. I've lost them before I had them fall apart on me. But I've still got one that, boy, I tied over a year ago and I'm still using. And I've used quite a bit. Caught quite a few fish on that same fly. And granted, they were bass. And bass aren't known for really sharp teeth. But still, they can destroy flies. Um, and I've never, never had any issues. Never had one fall apart. So they are durable. So once you tie them, you know, just be careful. Don't cast into, into trees and use a little heavier uh, tippet so you're not losing them and uh, they should last you a long time but they're really amazing flies they just they catch fish like there's so many times I'll be fishing and they won't touch anything I'll, I'll throw flies at, at a bass and it won't even look at it and then throw one of these on right away they follow it um, they get interested right away. It just, it moves so much like a fish. You know, you could say, okay, well, it's kind of like, you know, might as well throw something on a conventional rod then at that point, because I mean, there's little fast moving or um, well, good moving, you know, a lot of tail movement um, lures out there, but I don't know what it is about the fly, but just the way it hits the water or whatever, it's a little more finesse. It, it, it doesn't, just as something different. These things catch fish like no other. Um, they really do. I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. Chocolate? Chocket? Uh, Blaine, I think is his first name. He's the one that originated these flies and uh, he did a great job um, creating a pattern that just absolutely gets the fish's attention. And I've fished um, these in a number of different styles of fishing for trout. Um, you can fish them in rivers. Uh, you can fish them uh, in lakes for bass, even saltwater. I, um, the bigger size here, I tie in like a mullet color and I'll fish for redfish and speckled trout in the, in the ocean, um, in the Gulf of Mexico there and the fish go after them too there so just great flies if you want to do a little smaller in the ocean even these would work um, you could do a thinner wire 
hook if you wanted. You don't have to go so such a thick wire hook, and uh, you'll catch. Um, you know, you can you can hook them a little easier. So if you're fishing something lighter, like for instance this, I can fish with a four weight and still get it out there and still catch fish with. I don't need a heavy rod. Um, and so, but sometimes because it's a lighter lighter rod, I have trouble with a hook set on a heavier shank. So I'll um, I'll tie these with a thinner shank hook. All right. So we're going to do the same thing now that that shape is there. We're kind of get some material out. From in between the the joints there, give this some really good movement. So again, we're gonna continue doing some more trimming, but you can see now there's a difference in the movement. This is a little faster, a little um, you know, it's it's a little less less movement than the bigger one. You can see that moves quite a bit more. We will still trim this down a little more, but you can see it's more of the tail motion. But if you look at smaller bait fish, um, a lot of them, it's just really quick little tail motions. Um, they're not a lot of like super, you know, flowing movements. Um, so it actually ends up working out better because um, it mimics the fish better. And we're going to do a little more trimming anyway, and that will kind of bring out some, some more movement. But you can see. It still moves quite a bit. These move a little bit more, but again, we're mimicking a fish, and so we're mimicking that size of fish. Um, and the bigger fish like these have a little bit more kind of body wiggle, which this will give, because the weight of the back will move the head as well, so it'll kind of body wiggle. And these, you know, if you see little bait fish, it's just the little tail that's moving, you know? so. There we go. So that's that's rough cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these underwater and then we will uh, come back and color them. But it'll take a little while for these to dry. So <clears throat> hopefully I can finish today, but we'll see how fast they dry. You can see they're thin and they're wide. Um, this is after I wet them, so you can tell that they're wet. Um, Gonna have to let these dry. I pat them down. Once they're wet, you can see the shape that is forming. Well, all right, guys. So I have allowed this to dry, and I'm gonna go ahead and color this up. So for that, I'm using these Sharp Pack Ad markers. I like them a lot for this uh, application. They transfer a lot of ink or a lot of color quickly into the fly um, and I'm using this is a basic gray number one so it's super light gray um, this doesn't transfer very quickly um, it does but it doesn't transfer a lot uh, but that's what I'm doing gray top I'm just doing a light first and then I will this will allow me to gradient kind of the the gray instead of a sharp line <clears throat> of gray right down the, the middle. Um, I kind of like that gradient look. If you don't, that's fine. Just use darker gray on the back. And you'll see how quickly the gray, the darker gray works. Now the other thing you could use is Sharpies. So you could use Sharpies. They have <clears throat> multiple different colors of Sharpies. Here's a brown. Um, kind of like an orangey pink or like a peach color kind of all right so there's that so let's go ahead and then we're gonna color more of the front definitely down the center I find that if I go backwards it colors under neath and then you can go forward and I'll color on top of those fibers and that that's how you get all the fibers to be saturated in that color. And so it's hard to see, I know. I'm turning it so I can see the other side. I wish I could accurately do this without seeing, but <laughs> I got to be able to see it. You guys are over there, so sorry you're not seeing it. But once I turn, over, turn this fly around, you'll see it's more of a gradient gray going on. 
I take a black <clears throat> and I'll put a lot and just kind of run right at the head here. And I can kind of work that in with my finger. Just a little extra color, darker color right at the head there and that's it. And so there's kind of the the coloration now there is the, I'm gonna add a dot but I'm not gonna do that till after I do the second or the third trim because you could cut that dot off since we're just putting it right on the, the, the top layers there so there's that let's let that kind of dry that uh, fiber will harden a little bit which will make the next you know cutting trimming it easier um, but also you want that to dry so you're you know I'm getting it on my fingers and stuff but um, when you go to trim it'll kind of gum up your your scissors if you don't let that dry so yeah you can color these any color these are shad because the customer that is ordering from me was ordering a shad uh, coloration that's what he wanted in fact he's ordering quite a few different types of flies all different shad colors um, all for bass I believe he's going for and yeah, uh, but popular for me are uh, like a sunfish color. Bass love, sun, love to eat sunfish. Um, another coloration would be like all chartreuse. That's pretty popular. Um, in fact, they sell this fiber and other colors besides white. I think they do sell a chartreuse. That would make life a little easier. They sell it in black. I don't know all the colors, but I know that, that you could do that if you wanted the whole body to be at one color instead of coloring it in with the markers. That would definitely save some time. Uh, another coloration that is popular for me is like a rainbow trout. A lot of people want to buy the rainbow trout colors. Um, I guess they are fishing for like brown trout and stuff. So, you know, brown trout get predatory. There we go. So these are, you can see it's colored up. And I'm gonna let these dry. Now I got both of them here. And uh, I'll let these dry. I'll come back and do another trim. And then I'll put on the eyes. Add the, uh, and then I'll do a final trim after adding on the eyes. Um, and then add the dot. And that'll be it. So I'll see you guys uh, probably tomorrow. Um, so I'll have another shirt on. <laughs> this is a three day process video, so anyway. I will see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so now we are gonna trim. And just like before, we're just doing small little cuts. We're looking at it on the front, making sure there's no um, bulges. And you can see, maybe hard to see on camera, but right here there's a couple pieces that are a little bit sticking up higher than the other side. I'm gonna brush that out a little bit. But what's nice is once you color this up, it kind of stiffens those fibers a little bit so it's easier to cut. So in a way that's good, in a way that's bad because then you can accidentally cut too much. So just do light, light cuts at this moment. Um, from this point on actually, you don't wanna go too much. You can look at the top as well. So now I'm coming down. You can see that this is sticking up higher. We just want to even out the top. Make it look like it's even coming down. Same thing on the bottom. All right, once you do that, you can notice that once you kind of cut off square, you got to kind of shape this back on the top and bottom a little bit because we've cut it and therefore it's not shaped. So let's go ahead and kind of narrow out that section a little bit. And again, we're doing little cuts, go slowly. 
same thing with the top. It's not um, there's no square edges on on fish. You know they're they're rounded, so you just want to keep shaping this. And again, this isn't the last trim. This is. We're just kind of getting it down. All right, so as you can see, we've got now some room to play with this. We can come through. We can really kind of trim back a lot of these fibers. And really make this move really well. Too many of these fibers uh, sticking into the joint there is going to hinder the, the movement. All right. See, that's moving really well. All right, so that's about good for now. We're going to add the eyes and then we will do one last final trim because those eyes are going to change how some of this is positioned on there, especially around the head. So we'll have to trim that back a little bit, but we're, we're almost there. So because it's smaller and we're using same kind of materials it gets really bushy on these smaller ones so there's a lot more trimming to do you know i have a lot of people ask you know why why are you charging almost the same amount of money for the small ones as the big ones but as you can see there's pretty much the same amount of work if not a little more work honestly with the smaller ones to really trim this down you can see here how this side it's sticking out pretty far. It's because of the way that it's wrapped on. So I'll just kind of come in, try to get some of that off. And come in from this side a little bit. And then you want to, again, no, there's no right angles. There's no, you know, weird spots on fish like that. So you want to taper that down. So there we go. You can see how much movement even now um, with these. Um, that tail moves quite a bit. Um, so there we go. That's tied up. Let's add the eyes. All right, now that I got this close, I'm realizing there's a couple spots. Um, I like trimming it off the vise, but So what I like doing is, I know I've got three separate scissors that I use for these. These are the standard four inch, and I find I like these a little better for this application. So we're gonna come in and I'm gonna, I'm turning it sideways in my vise like this, and I'm gonna cut out a little bit of the fiber right up by the eye um, of the hook here. And because I need a place to pl plop the eyes on that is flat, So the glue has somewhere to, to grab. And it also ensures that the eyes don't look, keeps uniformity between the eyes, if that makes sense. So if you've got a lot of, the front here pushes water. So you've got, um, when we do the eyes, and you'll see how I do it, um, it's the first spot where the, the water hits, hits this and it creates different turbulences which gives the movement to the to the back tail section um, a bulkier front head is going to push more water and create more turbulence and make this move a lot more and so i am trying to keep this as even as possible so that way it doesn't have more turbulence on one side than the other and then it's moving funky 
You want this to track right, and therefore this needs a spot to lay the eyes on properly. All right, so there's that side. Let's get this side all trimmed up. Now there's a couple ways to add eyes. I mean, some people will just put a dab of super glue on, stick them on the side here and call it quits. But I find that those eyes will pop off very quickly. And I sell these, you know, and I don't want to sell flies that the eyes are going to pop off. At least not pop off super quickly. Now, this uh, method is the best I've seen, um, the best I've used for keeping the eyes on, but they're still going to come off at, at one point. You get a really hard hitting fish, or let's say you cast and there was a place I used to fish where um, I would have to cast up against a, a wall. There was like a, like a brick wall. Um, it wasn't brick, it was like concrete actually, but um, a hard wall and I'd have to try to land right, right next to the wall. But if I would hit the wall and it would bump the eye, it would actually damage, if I hit it hard enough, it would actually damage the, the resin there and would end up, uh, you know, breaking off the eyes. And I've had that happen a couple times. Um, I've also had some really strong fish that have damaged the eyes, but it's rare. And this will keep the, the eyes on through many more fish strikes than, than just a dab of super glue on the side, in my opinion. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Basically, I encase the whole thing in resin. All right, so we're getting all that f that fiber off. You can see when I brush, there's fiber coming off. Um, a little bit is okay, but we want this nice and clean so that way the eyes have a place to glue on and they're not trying to glue on to a loose fiber. All right, so both sides look about even. Got to grab the eyes, let me grab those. Okay, so for the larger size, so I'm using these um, living eyes. Yeah, that's the size. Six millimeter ice living eyes is what I use for this color. Um, they have them in a bunch of different colors. And depending on what color I'm you know, I use a different color eye for the rainbow trout color or whatever it may be. So I just like to match it with what that fish usually looks like. So a lot of times I'll just grab off two eyes, keep them on my hand here. So it's easy to get to because you want to work quick when you're using super glue. So um, one thing though is use gel type super glue like this. And uh, this is a, this is Loctite I like um, because it's pretty precision. These little things you squeeze it pushes the the glue up and so just keep that tip clean and uh, it, it'll give you a precision amount so you're not squeezing a bottle and I find this is a little more precision so um, but a gel type super glue is going to give you a little more um, time to set those eyes all right so one dot there one dot on the other side and we're just putting it right behind the, the eyes um, the, the hook eye, I mean, um, and then these have, so these eyes have like a little, they're not perfectly round, um, which gives them a nice look. It looks like a real bait fish eye. Um, and I just kind of, there's like a little point to it and I have that point up towards the front and I place the eyes on, but I have the eye part and you'll see in a second, the eye part almost pushed up against the hook eye. Um, the, the front of the eye here. And then I just try to keep them even. Because again, like I said, with pushing water, it's, um, you want those as even as possible. So it's an even um, turbulence out the back. Now, doesn't mean you scrap one if you can't get it perfect, no. Um, sometimes actually that will give a, a funky move movement to the to the fly which actually might look like a wounded bait fish so some people actually do put these eyes on not perfectly center all right so there we go i'm gonna let that dry so that's on you can see eyes on up towards the front there 
I'm gonna let that dry for a minute while I go on to the smaller game changer. And then we just set this aside, let that dry. Let's move on to the smaller one. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut up that uh, front portion. Let's put these eyes back because we're gonna use a smaller eye. We're using the five millimeter for the smaller size. There we go, five millimeter. You can see they're a little smaller. That's uh, a six millimeter will be millimeter will be too big for this. So again, we're cutting out a flat spot. Now, one thing I can say is if you're tying these at home, you don't want to do this method. You don't have to. Um, you could just put a dot of super glue on the fiber, stick the eyes on. Heck, you could fish these without eyes if you wanted. Um, and then, you know, pretty much after every single trip, you would have to, uh, <laughs> every time you get a, a fish strike, you would have to then just add more eyes. So that could get pricey unless you can get a good deal on eyes. If you want to get some cheaper eyes, you can get them way cheaper than these expensive living eyes. These look better, I think, but you know, you could always do that and just replace the eye every time. Could do that. I know a lot of people that do that. And like I said, they'll just stick them on the side here, put, put super glue on the side, or just even where I've got them and uh, call it quits right now after you position it. But I like to make sure that they're not going to come loose. So we'll see. Uh, you'll see what I'm going to do in a second here. All right, so this one is now probably dried in that amount of time. It does dry pretty quick. Um, it gives you a little more time to work with, but it does dry a little quicker. Yep, that's that's in there. So what I do is once I do, I put them on, um, I'll come in and I'll cut out a little bit of the fiber in between the eyes here um, to give some place for the resin to, to sit. So I'm going to fill up that section with resin in between the eyes, and you'll see in a second. And don't worry about a smooth transition from the eyes to the fiber. We're going to fix that in a second. Again, we're going to do another trim, but the resin itself is going to fix that a little bit, and you'll see what I mean. All right, get all that fiber off. So I'm gonna position this back like that. Okay, so make sure that when I put the, the resin in, if any of it is soaking in, it's gonna wanna soak back up into the eye. And this is the resin I've got. It's the thin hard formula from Solares. And it's got a nice, um, you can buy these. Uh, I don't think you can get the metal ones anymore. They, they make the, uh, them plastic, but it's the same idea. It's a preci precision tip. And you're just gonna fill up that cavity with the resin. You wanna come over on the side here and cover the thread wrap. See, this is so filled with resin that you're not gonna ever have a tooth um, get the thread wraps right in the front. So once that's filled, you can hit it with your, your light. There we go. And that's hard. Um, but yeah, that, I'm, that basically that seals up that the thread wraps, um, the whip finish and never have an issue. So. Once I do that, I like actually bulge, bulging up the front head part here a little bit more. So you can use, use the resin to kind of build the, the shape of the, the front of the head here. Little bits at a time. All right, so now I turn it like this. And if you don't have a rotary vise, I mean, it really makes it easier. I would highly recommend getting it, but I mean, they are more expensive generally. So now I know Peak, I think makes a rotary vise that's not too expensive, would work perfect for this. Um, but they're still generally a little more expensive. Um, you could do this without, but it does make it so much easier. All right, guys, my battery died there. 
and to replace it. But anyway, I filled up that cavity. And then one last trick. So now that the cavity is filled, you've got a little bit of resin over the front part of the eye. That's in there pretty solid, but this is Solarez's um, ultra thin formula. They also call it bone dry. And I just use this to fully, well actually you guys know what it is. I used it for the other part, but I just cover the entire parts of the eyes here all the way around. And that basically engulfs this whole thing in resin. And those eyes are solid. I mean, it's possible for them to come loose and they have, I've had them, especially saltwater fishing, like redfish, they, they eat crayfish. I mean, that's, <laughs> or not crayfish, uh, crabs. Um, and so they're, they bite and they compress to break shells. So if this is in there, it will compress it. And I've lost eyes to redfish, but <clears throat> no big deal. You just, I just do this again. Um, so that's one coat. And with the bigger one, I do two coats because generally I'm fishing bigger fish again with that same issue. Um, just a little more resin, a little more heft to the resin to keep it keep it on there better. But that basically engulfs the entire thing in resin. There's also resin in between it, so it's not gonna it's not gonna wiggle in there at all. Um, if it tries to get compressed, it just it really does make it a lot more durable. Okay, so that looks good. However, I do find that it's kind of bulky on the front and it doesn't transition in the eye. So usually I do one more trim here and you'll see in a second. I'm gonna do the small one really quick. Excuse my daughter in the background yelling. Um, I don't know if you can hear her, but little kids, you know, <laughs> that's how they are. Uh, so uh, with the little one, I've got these scissors. Uh, I know, a fourth scissor, but it's really hard to get in between the eyes with, with uh, the thicker scissors. So these are really fine. Um, and I like these a lot for this application. We're going to fill that with this thin resin. Obviously try not to get any of it in the eye of the hook. Build up a little bit more here on the head. Let's cover them. We're just going to do one coat with the smaller one. Now, to trim it. So I do not want to position the camera again into a different position, it's a pain. So I'm gonna see if I can trim this on here. Let's see if I can get in a little tighter though. And so what we're gonna do is, we're pinching this and we're gonna just, some of the fibers are sticking up. We're gonna just trim that back so it transitions into the resin head a little better. Really hard to trim this on, on here, but I think this is gonna be the best for, for the video. Whenever you cut on the top, you gotta then Remove those sharp edges. Okay. 
And we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom. Look at it from the front. Sorry guys, it's gonna be <laughs> me holding it. It's just so much quicker and easier. Again, nothing has to be exactly perfect, but I like getting it as close as I can, but you know, nature isn't perfect. That's the thing. Nature has some imperfections, has some, you know, differences. So you're not necessarily going to not trick a fish and go, oh man, that's not, that's not natural. Um, just because there's a couple imperfections, boy, I can't talk today. Um, and that being said, actually, sometimes imperfections can make them want to strike because they'll go, oh, that's an injured fish or whatever. So just get it till you're happy with it. Again, do not over trim because you can ruin one of these by over trimming. All right, so there we go. That's done. And now for the final coloring, I'm going to take just a Sharpie. That's what I use for this. You put a, a dot. And then you put another dot on the other side. And now you got the finished product here. There we go. Let's use, let's go with the larger one here. Let's finish up the trimming of the larger. So again, you can probably see this one a little better. There's, there's, it's not transitioned <clears throat> into the head. It looks a little funky. definitely a big bump there so we just try to thin that down a little bit <coughs> don't breathe in this fiber <laughs> it's getting everywhere and took a deep breath and I'm happy with that and then add that last dot and there we go it is done so both of them I can hold these. <laughs> Here we go. You can see the larger and the smaller. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the video on me tying these game changers. It's not my normal video. These take much longer because uh, I'm not editing this down. I'm not doing voiceover. I'm not, you know, doing a whole lot of sped up tying. Um, but you know hopefully it gave you some more info it allows me to actually um, talk a little bit more and explain a little more so hopefully it gave you some needed info on how to tie these yourself instead of having to buy them um, they are difficult to tie but you know i mean instead of spending the money i mean everyone sells these for right around 20 bucks each if not more um, in fact i've seen some places sell them for 36 bucks each so that's, that's pretty pricey. And those were like main, uh, what is it? Bass Pro Shop, I think, was selling them for a while for that price. So most most of the time people are buying or selling these for quite a bit, just like me, because they do take so long to tie. But if you want to give it a try, 
hopefully this gave you the info that you needed. You could see someone do it uh, pretty much step by step all throughout. Hopefully it helped. If you do want to buy them and you figure, hey, I'm not going to spend the time doing that, um, I do sell them. So let me know. Comment or uh, contact me through. Uh, best way is going to be through Instagram um, or Facebook. Uh, also, if you don't have either of those, you don't do social media, go ahead and find me, uh, find my email on the YouTube homepage. So if you go to my YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube slash McFly Angler, I think it is, and you go to the about section and then you click the about section, you go to uh, uh, right under the about section, it'll, you've got to click something that says show email or something or contact or something like that. And it will uh, give you my email there. So then you can just go ahead and email me and let me know what you want to buy. I, I do sell more than these. So pretty much any fly out there. But uh, this is part of an order I'm doing right now of this and then a couple other shad style flies for a fisherman, uh, fly, a bass fisherman. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, definitely check out Risen Fly. They manufacture the all the scissors I've been using. Um, also, they make some great hooks. They make great rods and reels. Definitely check them out. And uh, yeah, if you have any, any questions, just leave them in the comment section. I will do my best to answer as quick as possible. If you haven't already, check out my Patreon. It's not mandatory, but there's some cool perks on there. Um, for as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to my videos so you can watch them before anyone else. You can also, um, <clears throat> I, I try to do live streams every once in a while. I was doing them every month and uh, we've been sick quite a bit since the kids went back to school. It's been tough to be able to schedule that time but uh, I'm trying to still do it every month. Uh, but I do those and you can always jump on those and be able to chat with me one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I do in some of the higher tiers do offer one-on-one -on -one help. So if you're trying to tie, for instance, these, you have trouble. Um, it's kind of like a, you know, your own personal guide in a way of, uh, I can actually even do video chat if you want or call you on the phone. Um, if you're in one of the higher tiers and spend a little bit of time, usually about a half hour a month if you need, um, trying to uh, answer some questions that you have on tying um, or fishing or whatever. Um, but there's some cool perks on there. So definitely check that out. Uh, www.patreon.com forward slash McFly Angler, I believe is the link to it. But I'll, I'll leave the link in the description section below. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all of you who are my subscriber already. All of you who share on my videos. You really are the reason I, I do this. Um, I couldn't do it without you. Um, and uh, I just, I'm blessed and I'm honored and I, I, I can't thank you all enough for over 50,000 subscribers. It's, a, it's amazing. And I thought I would never get this far, but here I am and I and, uh, can't tell you how, how happy I am with that. So thank you all for everything. Um, and I will see you guys on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.